Welcome to the new week. Um, so I went out yesterday for a walk around my backyard and I got, I got mosquito bites absolutely everywhere. So despite the fact that it's kind of chilly out there these days, in the mornings and the evenings, there's still mosquitoes. And I don't, I don't know if it's because I went out there when it was 80 in the middle of the day, so the mosquitoes were awake and buzzing around, but I kind of don't want to go around uh, this morning. I think it's like 52 out there in case there's mosquitoes, because that was kind of awful. They even went after my face. <laughs> um, we can take a quick peek out there through the window, though. I mean, enjoy the construction site, too, right? What a DMZ. And based on the, where's my finger? Based on the height of the fire hydrant that's over there, I'm, I'm guessing they're making that thing higher elevation than it ever was. So I'm kind of worried about water drainage because all of our backyards here are now lower than all of that disaster. Um, hopefully it works out okay. I have no idea. But anyway, back to the things that aren't bad. Uh, flower patches, more green than flowery, but that's okay. I've seen, um, in bear patches that got, like, the walkway here, right there, where the flowers were leaning over the grass for a while, it's become a little bit bare of grass, and I've seen seedlings of the cosmos and maybe some of the native weeds, but definitely the cosmos start coming up through there. So I'm wondering if I'm, I might actually block it off right there and make it into a proper maze and let it start up next year. So the flowers are definitely receding themselves a little bit, but like the, the patch that was over here where they were digging the D box for my um, septic system last year, the flowers didn't recede over there and I'm not sure why. So Maybe it's hit or miss, I don't know. So I ordered another uh, five pound bag of wildflower seeds from that company, um, American Meadows. I think I had gotten most of my um, wildflower seeds from them last year and it worked out okay. So I got, they they had their regional mixes on sale for like 20% off. So I got a five pound bag um, for 20% for off, which is nice. Um, and I'm gonna go throw it all over the place probably in like a month. So some of it, sort of like right here, has more grass than not. And I'm trying to decide if I want to put down uh, that landscape fabric again and kill everything off for six months and then throw down flowers again or try to like rip out the grass by hand or use a hoe or something instead. Because if I put the wildflower seed down, they might not be able to get through the grass. So I need to do something, but I'd feel bad about killing back anything that's perennial right there. Even though I guess, I guess the flower to grass ratio is kind of low, so it wouldn't be that bad. But over here, where the flowers didn't really come up, I'd put that wet mix over here because it was sopping wet in the spring and then like nothing sprouted. So I went through and put down a couple more layers of wildflower seed and, um, Nothing really still came up. So there's a bit of grass there because it had nothing to compete with and I'm not sure what I need to do with it. The The yellow flower that's right there, that's some sort of needed quote unquote weed. I'm glad it's blooming, um, but there wasn't much in there. So uh, I guess I got stuff to figure out. The, the rest of it where flowers did come up, it's like bare dirt underneath because um, even if there was a little bit of grass earlier in the season, all of the tall wildflowers shaded it all out. So it didn't really get a chance to grow. So um, maybe I just scattered wildflower seeds everywhere, including, where's my finger? <laughs> including here and then hope that the flowers grow faster than the grass and outcompete it, but we'll see. Also, the strip right here is kind of thin, so maybe that's why. The, the denser parts, definitely, there's nothing in the dirt underneath the flowers, like in the middle of that. Actually, half of it has laid down because of the the weather and everything and how late the season is. It's, it's the half that you can't see behind this part that's really full. So I had to go through with my sickle and chop back a lot of it in the path because the path was impenetrable because of all of the flowers that had laid down. 
which in my opinion is a great problem to be having. <laughs> anyway, so out in the garden, the succotash beans are kind of finishing up. I went through on Wednesday and picked any and all tomatoes that looked like they were turning from unripe green to any sort of color in case the tomatoes decided they were done for the season because we had nights in like the 48, 49 degrees range. It looks like they're still ripening, which is good. Our nights next week are supposed to be in the 60s, days in the 70s or so. Um, which means we'll probably hit 80 in the sun. It's supposed to rain all week though, so hopefully all those... It might be a disaster. All the tomatoes might split while they're ripening, and then if it's raining the whole entire time, they might just, like, split in mold. <laughs> uh, we'll see. Um, and also, I don't know, I don't remember if I planted those clumps of white asters over there. Or if they're native, because they're behind the fence too. But they're, like, nowhere else. So maybe my seeds escaped and now I have white asters everywhere because I definitely have purple ones too. And I think they're native to here. And I think the neighbors over here might have some purple ones over there, but their purple ones are different than mine. Mine are a bit of a deeper purple. So I looked it up online and I think that there are different kinds of purple asters that are kind of na native to the Eastern United States. So, um, I guess I'm, I'm excited that there's lots of asters in my yard and they're also um, attracting honeybees, those white clumps everywhere, even all the way in the back. There's tons of honeybees and all sorts of interesting insects working them, like lots of little butterflies. Um, I swear, if somebody, if those are actually domesticated, if somebody is keeping a beehive here, I am feeding their hive for them all summer long this year because those bees love the white poppies too. I guess they just love white plants. Oh yeah, there's a clump of those white asters here in the corner too. In the dirt patch where that big, uh, what is it, big shed used to be that I had hauled off. I didn't think anything would grow, but those asters came up. I haven't seen the flax or a bunch of the other wildflower seeds that I threw there last year, but I'm glad that at least a couple of uh, native U.S. wildflowers have popped up. Um, I went through and mowed last weekend, so I'm not going to mow this weekend. I've been doing it every two weeks so that I don't stress myself out and eat up so much time. Um, maybe next weekend I'll go again. I guess depending on if the grass is growing a lot. I, I guess if it's going to be in the 60s at night, the grass is still probably going to keep growing. Same with if it's going to be raining. I don't want to, but I guess I'll be good begrudgingly mow. Anyway, so the experiment for growing things inside, going well. Uh, greens, like ge generic, all sorts of greens, like bok, bok choy and mustards and stuff. Over here, it's basils and then a heading lettuce. So this definitely looks like basil, basil and I think this is gonna be one of those head, heading lettuces, like tennis ball lettuce or something like that. Uh, I'm excited to have fresh greens this winter. I don't know why some of those laid down. Hopefully they're not dying because sometimes things die off at the soil level, right? So maybe I just need to blow on them more so to simulate wind and make them get sturdier. Those are cucumbers. I planted three seeds, two of them came up, so I'm guessing they're of the same kind. Um, but that's okay, because I don't know if they're self-fertile or if they need a buddy, but I have a buddy, and I'm gonna train them to climb up one of the shelves here, and then I'll be able to make replacement pickles mid-winter. That's the goal. Hopefully there's enough light in here for that. And then broad beans. I've never grown broad beans before. Apparently they're tossed frost tolerant. I learned that like last weekend, maybe a couple days before last weekend, because that's when I ordered the seeds and then they came for the weekend, so I planted them. Uh, when the last of those beans gives up and when the tomatoes out there start looking really worse for wear, maybe in a week now, right, if it really cools down, if it stops being 60 at night, I'm gonna pull up the trellises outside, rip up everything underneath them, mix in some compost because I've been uh, working hard on getting the compost ready, spinning it a lot in those composters and leaving a couple of the barrels alone so that they really break down. Um, gonna miss even even though beans are nitrogen fixers, right? but there must be something else in the compost that'll be good for them. So spread in some compost and then uh, put the trellis back. 
I think broad beans aren't like other beans. They don't vine as much. Maybe they don't get as tall, but we'll see. So I'll plant these under one of, or maybe both of the trellises. I think I'm going to move the back trellis up to where it was, where the original trellis was last year and make that far bed, like rhubarb and asparagus and all of the really perennial stuff. So, um, we'll, we'll see how things die back though. Um, so these broad beans are doing well. I don't know how tall they'll get in a week or two, but I'm guessing, guessing by the size that they already are that they will be ready. And this one is those, um, painted violas or whatever they're called. They're kind of streaky. I'm excited. I like having them out in the garden. I had to pin up my moringa because it was all bent and warped because the passion fruits had grown all over them. So in, in those big pots that say gardening on them, I repotted the the Passiflora quadrilangularis last weekend. And then I guess they'll be in that shelf because I had left some space open and it seems like they ought to grow perfectly there. I really feel like I need to cut back those vines that are all over the front of it. I don't know. My so I went to a pain specialist uh, a couple days ago and he said, oh yeah, it, it is the herniated disc in your back and nothing else. So he gave me some um, steroid pills to bring the inflammation down and um, more of the more appropriate painkillers that I should be on. So I feel better than I have in two months. So maybe, maybe in a week, if I'm still feeling good, then I might get on top of this stuff a little bit better. What else? These cuttings are still green, which is good. Hopefully they actually root this time. The purple um, elephant ear not looking so good. That was its last leaf. It didn't like the move. The little peperomia didn't either, I guess. Man, I hope it doesn't die. <laughs> this one's still okay. Begonia is still okay. Um, this monstera is pretty unhappy. Leaves yellowing. Plants don't like moves, right? But hopefully these guys don't decide that they're gonna die on me. Um, everything else hopefully is settling in. Um, and maybe, maybe that's it for this week. It's already kind of long enough anyway, so. Oh, and those new um, orchids that I had gotten in a couple weeks ago, I'm going to think about repotting them this weekend. Okay, so I do have some orchid bark. I think I have something like 10 or 12 orchids, so maybe I'll take some of the moss that's already in and mix it with some of this orchid bark and repot, because they're more wet than I usually like, so uh, maybe this afternoon I'll repot those. Okay, uh, bye for now. Until next week.